Welcome to the Homefront Podcast. I am your host, Tori McQueen. I'm a realtor, an entrepreneur, a mom of four, and a bold dreamer, always on a mission to turn nothing into something. Have you ever wondered how all these other entrepreneurs do it all? Can they actually have a successful and thriving business while also having a happy home life? Here, we dig into the real stories from entrepreneurs on how to run a biz and a home life, how to scale and grow, and how to manage parenting and relationships without sacrificing your home life or happiness. After all, isn't that what matters most? Let's get to it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show, the Home From Podcast. And today we've got a really cool guest on the show. I actually met her through um, one of our mentors that we kind of work under. And she is also a mom of four. And she runs her own little business there while running her family. She's considered the not so fancy business coach, right? So she likes to do things a little bit differently. So we'll talk about that today. And she focuses on simplified marketing for other entrepreneurs. So I am excited to dive in with her. So everybody welcome Hillary Kerr. Hi, thank you so much, Tori. I'm excited to be here and connect with another mom with four kids. There's a special place in heaven for us. <laughs> Oh, 100%, 100%. Okay, so tell me, um, tell tell us a little bit about you, how you got here first. So. Yeah, so I um, have always wanted to be an entrepreneur growing up. I mean, I originally, after we got married, I mean, I listened to Jenna Kutcher, the Gold Digger podcast. I listened to Amy Porterfield, Online Marketing Made Easy. I would listen to anything and everything on how to be an entrepreneur, but I wasn't one. So I was just like a consumer and listening to all of these people who started, scaled, and grew their business, and I had dreams of doing it. My girls even um, knew Jenna Kutcher's like happy little jingle on her podcast, and oh I just think that that is a true testament to the consistency in your content because it wasn't until three years into listening to her podcast that we started our own business. And so consistency in what it is that you do and what it is that you talk about, you will likely gain those people who have been watching your journey over the last three, four, five years, all of a sudden become a um, client of yours moving on. So anyways, I did all of those things. We decided that we wanted to open a CrossFit gym. And that was the very first like dabble, I guess I had in owning an actual business. So we started a CrossFit gym, but it started out a little bit different. It started in our garage. My husband would invite friends over and one person turned into two, two turned into four. All of a sudden, 5.15 a.m., I had 12 people working <laughs> out of my garage and we just decided to open a gym. So we did that and our CrossFit gym grew tremendously to right around 120 members in under, oh, 10, wow. under 10 months. Yeah, it grew so much, super, super quickly. The thing was, was that my husband and our business partner were the face of the gym and I did all of the back end stuff. Then we joined the, a course under Jenna Kutcher and we joined a course under her. And from there, we decided to start a Facebook page for kids, for parents of kids with challenging behavior. It wasn't even an LLC. It wasn't even an actual business. It was just a free Facebook page to help parents um, of kids with challenging behavior. My husband is board certified behavioral analyst. So he helps um, kids that have behavioral problems. Anyways, his company that he worked for, that he was a clinical director for, told him that you need to take down that Facebook page. Otherwise, you are losing your job. Oh, because the certifications or requirements or something? No, they just told him that he had to take it down because it was a breach of contract, even though it wasn't a business, even though he wasn't helping kids, he was helping the parents. Needless to say, we had to get a lawyer, all of these things, but he ended up losing his job. They fired him. And <gasps> from there, we literally had no income. I was serving and waiting tables. And we decided to start that. We decided to start a business around this then, even though we weren't a business before we decided to go with it. So we actually sold our house, moved into a townhouse, took that money that we had saved from the house. And we went all in on this business that 
wasn't even a business yet. And we started and scaled and launched that. So I was all of all, through all of this, through our two businesses, I was the back end. Like I did all the marketing, all the email, all the content, all of those things leading up. And he was just the face of it. Then one day we were in our townhouse, we were outside, we just had a great course launch. And my husband said to me, I am just not an online guy. I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, what the heck? Like I literally, (laughs) we just grew this business from nothing to nearly six figures in under a year. We sold our house. We uprooted our family. We have three kids currently. And now you're telling me you don't want to do this anymore. And I was really mad. So I went inside And I was like, you know what, if I just find one person who needs help with the back end work, with the marketing, with the content, with the systems, like all of that, if I just find one person who's like my husband, who has a degree and wants to create an online business around it, then I'll be so happy. Well, I put it out there into the interwebs and I'm looking to help one person and I ended up getting 52 people interested. Holy smokes. Okay. So hold on one second because I'm loving everything I'm hearing, but I'm also like, oh my God, question, 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 question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So let's take it back real quick. So your CrossFit gym, you had three kids at the time you said, or what year is this? Yeah. Three kids at the time. Yeah. 2019 and 2020. Yep. Okay. When all started to plummet with the COVID stuff. Okay. So lost his job, COVID hit, sold the house. And at that point, it sounds like you guys had been working together as entrepreneurs and you really defined your part in that. Exactly. Exactly. And what my husband would say was that having an online business was my dream and he was the vessel because I thought in order to have a business, you had to have a degree because that made you, that gave you the credentials in order for people to want to pay you. So I was utilizing his degree and doing 99% of the work and he was the forward facing vessel. And I was the one who had the dream to start these two businesses And he had the the experience as far as like the product, the product that you thought you needed to be. So I thought building a business had to be around his skill set because he was the one who went to school for it. So like he's really big into CrossFit. Okay, let's launch a CrossFit gym. Okay, he has his master's degree in behavioral psychology. Okay, let's do a parent coaching platform where I didn't care what the business was. I Uh just wanted to be an entrepreneur and do all of those things. So I utilized him as the forward facing vessel to launch and scale any type of a business. Right. And that's the fun of it, honestly. Like I totally feel you on that. Yeah. And it gets addicting. Okay. So now let's go. Now you have the experience of going nothing to six figures in one year. Mm -hmm. And he says, this online thing is not my jam. Like, I don't like it. Okay. So- Yep. And that's when I did, I just put it out there. I got 52 people that said that they applied, that said they wanted help. And I just posted it on a Google Doc on Facebook. And I had 52 people say that they were interested. And from there, my business was born. I started with mini masterminds, mini group programs. I did a couple master classes. I started working with people one to one in helping with simplified marketing. I actually called it implement with Hillary, where I helped people okay. take action in their business instead of working behind the scenes constantly. Mm-hmm. Um and from there it just grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. Now I have a team of roughly three to four people right now and I have like a group coaching program that I have like, you know, roughly 50 people in at a time. I do mini marketing um, masterminds. I work one-to-one with more established businesses. And the kicker is, Tori, is that I don't have a degree. And I had a baby during, I had a fourth baby during the pandemic and also moved to a new state during all of this. Yes. Yes. You know what though? It's because you're just doing It's the implementation part, right? That I think that a lot of people struggle with or just being afraid to take the action. And honestly, after chatting with so many people that are moms and stuff like that, it's almost like you 
because you're busy, you have to really figure out just how to, what's the, what's the one thing I can do to take this from zero to a hundred because I don't have any other options and I don't have any other time and I just need to, to act. And then I think that that sounds like your strength is that you just go, 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 go without the, without the fear. I think that there is success in the fear and success through the failure because the faster that you get through to the fear and the faster you fail, the faster you find success. So for instance, if there's two people that want to lose 10 pounds, the person who there's two different types of people, there's one person who works out every single day and watches their diet and, you know, watches what they eat every single day. And then there's somebody who does it maybe two days a week, maybe watches what they eat two or three three times a week, the person who does it consistently is going to lose the 10 pounds first. But guess what? They're both going to lose 10 pounds. So you need to decide how consistent do you want to be and how fast do you want to get to your end result? And the res- and the things that you do leading up to that are going to reap your results faster. So if you trial and error content on what sticks, you post two or three times a day, you are going to get to what people want help with faster than the person who maybe does it two or three times a week. People want the fast results, but they don't want to do the thing to get there. And I think that that's a problem in the online world is that people sell you the dream on ease and be home with your kids and work in the cracks of your day. I'm here to tell you that it is not easy. It's not with ease. It's that they're telling you, the coaches or the online gurus that are telling you, that they're at right now, they're not telling you phase one, two, and three of their business. They're just selling you the dream of their phase five. They're forgetting that all that stuff that they did ahead of time because people don't want to buy into work. Oh, it's going to be work. Oh, I'm out. I don't want to do the work. Fine. That is fine. (laughs) Then you're telling me that you don't want the results. Yes. And that is huge. And even going back to what you said about, you know, Jenna Kutcher, like, you know, what she did and how she started and then listening to her for three years before you even became a client of hers or, or something that purchased into, into that. She, Um, um, she posted something. She's on maternity leave right now. And she posted something recently and she said, 2016 me would be mortified that I didn't post for an entire week in 2021. And I commented back and I said, 2016 you is the reason why 2021 you can take a full break off because she did the content. She started a podcast. She did it every single day consistently. She posted every single day. She emailed her list every single week. The reason why future you can take a big long break while still making money is because of what present you is doing right now. Or what, what 2016 you did, right? To get there. Yes. Yep. And yes, exactly. and what allowed her to hire the team to get to where she is now and be able to take that break. She did yes, it. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yep. Oh my gosh. So much good stuff there. Okay. So now that you, your husband kind of went on his path, how old are your kids now? They are nine, eight three and one. Okay, perfect. I have nine, seven, four, and two. So very similar, very similar. And I feel you on all levels there. Okay, so you have your kiddos, you have three at the time, pandemic hits, hubby no longer wants anything to do with your passion of growing a business, it sounds like. He's like, let me just, you're probably going a million miles an hour. And he's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just like to show up and people face to face, probably online's not his jam. And here you are, You started your mini courses, masterminds, started with 50 something clients, which is actually a lot to start out with. That's huge kudos for you. And now you're, you're rolling. Okay. So what, so now is it, I'm assuming just recently, this is what I love is that you're still so fresh, but you're still like, you are rocking and rolling. So take it back. So I'm a beginning of 2020. Is that when you started with your 52 clients or? Yeah, it was like March of 2020 when I started my first group 
program. And then in June is when we decided that we were going to sell our half of the gym. Um, I found out I was pregnant with our fourth baby. Surprise! At the time, um, we decided we wanted to move back home, which was in a different state than the current state that we were living in. We lived in Wisconsin. We were moving back to Minnesota. We got out of our lease with our townhouse. We were in works with selling our gym and we were moving back to Minnesota. My husband then got a awesome job in a school district here in Minnesota. And he's face to face. He's helping with behavioral plans in a school. It's exactly what he wanted to be doing was no longer being online. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Good. Okay. So you're back in Minnesota. You're pregnant with your fourth. You're launching your business. All right. Like, where are you now? Yeah. So right now, currently, I mean, my baby at the time that I was pregnant with, he's a little over one now. My husband is working in that school district. And I currently run high level masterminds. And then I have like a group um, course coaching program all around messaging and marketing, simplified messaging and marketing. So what that looks like is on the back end, a lot of times people think that you need all of the fancy things in order to get started. A lot of times even companies think that they need a really high level CMO and chief of marketing and a marketing department of their company. But honestly, things are changing in the content marketing realm. And influencers are the vessel for people getting their service and product out there. So there's rookies in businesses, there's experts, there's influencers, and there's thought leaders. And in order to become a thought leader, you have to start thinking like an influencer. And what is happening today is that a lot of brands and a lot of companies and even solopreneurs are thinking they need more strategy or they need more certifications or they need this high level CMO, half a million dollars to help grow their company. And they don't need that anymore. What they need are content creators to get on surface level with the everyday buyer and the everyday client and speak their lingo. So that's what I think is going to be shifting and changing is that everybody like you and I have an opportunity to be our own chief of marketing and really speak to the everyday person through the eyes of going in with, I need to generate content so that people can hear and see my message and see what it is that I have to say. And you have an opportunity to take off bigger and better than a lot of big brands. Because people want real and they want it consistently. And they don't give a crap about fancy videos or fancy aesthetics. They just want real, raw familiarity consistently. And so I think that that is what I bring to the table is that I don't have a degree, but what I am and what I do do is I am a consumer of marketing like everybody else. So I see what I notice and what I and what sticks with me. And I don't have the you know, high level marketing lingo, but what I can do is help people get results. And that's kind of what I do. And right now I currently have three one-to-one clients who are more pretty established in business and are looking for a new simplified marketing eye. And that's what I think what is going to be changing the game over the next year to five years in marketing is being significantly more relatable. Yes. So like all of that, there's so much there. Okay. So I agree with you. People are wanting less polished, less, and they want it to be raw. They want it to be relatable and they want it, you know, they, they buy things because they trust you and they're watching you and they feel like they want to buy into what you have because you're being honest with them Yeah, and you're being raw and there's no flu, flu, fluff with that. And every platform is a little bit different, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. I think that it is transitioning to being more raw, relatable, authentic. I mean, those words are thrown around so much right now, but they are true. And your personal brand is four things. It's your value. It's your visuals. It's you being vulnerable and oh my gosh, your value, your visuals, vulnerability, and kind of like what you stand for. That is all encompassing of what your personal brand is. So like 
what breaks your heart, what makes you upset, and what do you stand for? And within those things is your personal branding messaging. And that is what I believe that everybody needs to implement if you want to take off in the online world. If you want to run an online business, I hate to say it, but you have to show up online. You can't just have this master's degree in Um, public speaking and expect people to come to you to help them with public speaking. They don't know you. They don't care. They're going to hire the influencer who talks every single day and really refines their message. They're going to hire them over you, even though you have the degree. Okay. So would you say anybody can really, if they just make a personal brand, would you say that is the key to growing anything from, you know, because you said you could be in a business that is you know, with an expert, or you could just pick whatever topic or whatever industry and turn it into something because that's your passion. Would you say that personal branding is the way to go for people who are looking to do their business? I 100% believe that when you are a small business owner and a solopreneur, personal branding is marketing. And on a higher level, let's think about Tesla for an instance. Everybody knows what Tesla is, but you know what Tesla doesn't do? They, their ad spend on marketing is $0. They are the only car company in the entire world that has an ad spend of zero. And do you know why that is? Because everybody knows who Elon Musk is. Elon he's Musk, is, <laughs> Elon Musk is the definition of personal branding to a T. People right. know him. He's weird. He's quirky. He names his kids weird names. He goes on Joe Rogan. He is literally the epitome of personal branding at its finest. When you hear Tesla, you know Elon Musk. He has a zero ad spend. That is personal branding on a high level. Another example is the guy who owns Crumble Cookies. That's a business that's literally taking off right now. It's a oh, yeah. of cookies and uh-huh. it's a guy, I believe his name is Brandon. Don't quote me, but he does personal branding. He just shares his house. He shares his day. He shares what he likes. He shares that he's single. He does all of these things and he happens to own crumble cookies. What that does is it connects you to an identity. It connects you to the person. Therefore you like the business. Yes. That is what small businesses and solopreneurs need to do. They need to figure out their personal brand so that people can feel something and connect with them. And therefore, your personal brand is your marketing. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And personal branding. So here is what I hear from some, and and it's a fear of mine with the personal branding, being a mom of four and having another one on the way is that, oh my gosh, if a personal brand is up to me, then I have to always show up. And it's kind of that fear of like, am I going to pigeon myself in a corner where I am never going to be able to outsource that part, right? How am I ever going to scale my business without me if personal branding is the thing? And do you believe that that's even an option? No. Or do you have... Okay. And do you have people that have that same fear? You can literally outsource anything and everything on the back end. But if you have a small business, people need to connect to you. So that should be the only thing you don't outsource. Think about Jenna Kutcher. She doesn't outsource her social media posting and she doesn't outsource her podcast. She is the voice and she is the face. She can never and should never outsource that forward facing part of her business. Now, if you are a tech company or you are somebody who I just think it is my personal opinion, and this is an opinion that I don't teach it how to remove yourself from that position because people buy from people. People don't buy from robots. So they need to see the human behind the thing. Okay. So that being said, when you're building a personal brand, you said you have a team of three to four. So how, what, what did you decide to outsource? Because obviously your number one goal is showing up, right? So with personal branding, they need to see you. So what does that look like growing and scaling your, your personal branding, you know, or your business utilizing personal branding? So I, my first hire that I ever did was I hired a virtual assistant and she helps with all of my client onboarding and offboarding and bookings and time slots and calendar, all of those things. So she handles all of that. 
When you are a mom, you have two to three minute increments. And those two to three minute increments is when I show up on Instagram stories or when I start writing a post or when I do an email or when I respond and engage with people on social media or through email or LinkedIn or wherever that is. I can do that in two to three minutes at a time. I will never outsource that because it would it is taking away the human factor of my business. So the first hire I did was a VA. The second hire that I did was um a project manager. And what that person does is they oversee to make sure all of the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. Um, we're on track with all of the things that I want to launch. They are checking over all of my courses to make sure that all the links are working. They are self-starters. So she basically was like, hey, I noticed this was wrong. I just did it. My third hire that I did was I hired a contractor for copywriting help and co-coaching. So what that looked like was in some of my group programs, people needed more support. So I hired on a co-coach to help be additional support in my group programs. Now in my group program that I have launching the end of January, the end of this month is she, I have four co-coaches so that nobody gets left behind. I will answer and oversee it all, but then there's people who have worked under me that are now co-coaches in my program. So that no woman or man gets left behind in the program and they get all of their questions answered. Then my fourth hire was an integrator. And this person is literally, her name is Tamara. She is my right-hand woman. I bounce all ideas off of her. She literally will say, hey, let's do this, this, and this. She does all of my back end, all of my organizing. So I never have to worry about any of that. All I have to worry about is being a human and talking with other people. That's all I have to do. Okay. And that is, so that allows you to grow and scale and create the processes to yep. be able to keep showing up. Exactly. Exactly. While still growing your clients. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And it's so funny because my social media gal, she's like, you need to get on live. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I don't want to do lives. And she's like, you have to. Like, I'm sorry, like people want to see you. And I'm like, what do people want to know? And honestly, they engage. They just are watching you. They have questions. They just want to see what you're doing. Like, it's a different world. And it takes some getting used to, but she gets on me about that all the time. Like, your number one thing that you should be doing is just showing up. Yep. You know, with me running a real estate team and then dealing with clients on the daily there and then growing this also, it's just a little bit, you know, a, of a challenge for me because I deal with people in real world scenarios, kind of like your husband does. Mm -hmm. But then how do I bring that online to where I feel like people are actually feeling me? But they do. People flock. I like to hear that, um, you know, you're hiring people because I think that that is hard for people. Now, when... So building your personal brand, you're deciding to outsource all the things that you cannot or that you can, right? Because it doesn't sacrifice you showing up, right? How do you prepare to hire these people or what, how are you doing them all con are, as contractors? Yeah. Like, can right, contractors right, now, now or? right now they're contractors. I also have an accountant. I forgot to mention that I hired her like six months into my business. I have an oh, accountant. 100%. And um, she has been very helpful. Her name is Candice with New Way Accounting, and she helps female entrepreneurs. That's her handle on Instagram. She is literally amazing. Anyways, she helps me with deciding when I need to have a W-2 employee. So I probably will coming into 2022 here. I'll hire somebody more mm -hmm. like one of the gals that works for me right now. Mm -hmm. I'll hire more as like a W-2 employee. Right. But that's the cool part about being online too, is that all these people, I mean, a lot of the people I hire are contractors also, you yeah. know, because, yeah. you know, as you're growing and scaling and you're trialing and erring and you're seeing who fits, who doesn't fit, it's a less riskier way I feel like to get someone on board than yeah. just taking someone under your wing right away. And I think a lot of people don't realize that either when they're building yeah. their, their personal brand set to do that. Now, how did you decide that um, 
I need someone for this job. I think that the first thing that I was realizing is that I don't like working so much behind the scenes and it was an easy thing for me to process out. Onboarding a client, I could easily make that a process. And I think that that's the hardest part where people that have a small business, when they first get started, they're like, I need to hire somebody, but I don't know what they're going to do. Like I right. hired them now, what do they do? I would say the first thing, if you work one to one with clients, is to train somebody on the steps so that they can have a really good client success path and that they're taken care of right away out of the gate. So having that first initial touch point, I think another thing that I try to do is talk about my team so that I'm not always in the hero position. So Uh, right when somebody somebody signs with me, I let them know my client concierge, Amanda, will be um, emailing you and setting up a time to book together. And if you have any payment questions, you can reach out to her. I fully trust her and I love her to death. She will 100% take care of you. And they're like, oh, okay, good. They trust Amanda then because they trust me. And so I think that that's the thing, that's the missing link that some business owners don't do is all of a sudden they sign on a client and then somebody emails them and they're like, wait, who are you? Why should I tell you my payment? Oh, yes. Well, and I like that you call it the the client success path because you're putting the client experience first to determine what needs to be there to support your business. And I think that is huge because, you know, if you can, if you, it's one thing to get a client, but to keep a client and get good, good referrals and to get good reviews, that's a whole nother story. So I think that's a huge, huge um, piece of advice that I would definitely use in my business and, recommend to anybody building a personal brand is think about your clients first and their success path that you want them to have and then have some a position there to support that. Exactly. So I think that's exactly. huge there. Okay. How do you do all this with your four kids? Yeah, that is... I wish that I could lie to you, but honesty is such like a huge brand value of mine. Tell me. It's really freaking hard, Tori. It is so hard. I mean, today is the first day in months that I haven't had a kid home with me. Running a business during a pandemic with four kids, there's Uh, always somebody home with me. On top of that, my baby had a bunch of health issues his first year of life. So I uh, have always had what my followers and friends know is that what I called him was my cube mate. He was always here with me all the time. It was a lot of, and it still is a lot of 8 p.m. cube mate? Yes, yes, my cube mate, Hawk. It was, and it still is a lot of 8 p.m. to midnight, a lot of things at night. It is easy, though, to show up, like I talked about, in two to three minutes at a time. I will batch call days, too. So I only do calls on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Thursdays and Fridays, I will just, because Hawkins is home with me then on Thursday and Friday, I will just show up on stories. Um, If he takes a longer nap, I'll do something for an hour. And then on Thursday Mm -hmm. and Fridays, I work at night between eight and midnight. And that's honestly the reality of it. And that's the reality that people don't tell you. Cool. I launched and scaled a half a million dollar business. I still work till midnight some nights. Like, don't let people fool you that it's with ease and they're not stressing over sales pages and they're not worried about sending off emails. Like, that's a lie. There and without lies. without sacrifice. Yeah, without sacrifice. There is a sacrifice. So, so, like, for instance, you know, uh, you know, it's very common for us as moms to want to be with our kids. We want to be there um, unless you have a nanny full time, which some entrepreneurs do, and then they don't have to work that night. But for, for me, I, I juggle it with my, my husband and I batch a lot of things on like two days a week where my kids are in care, but I don't want all the weeks, right? I want to be with them. And half the time when they're little, like you said, they sleep for three hours. So you can get so much done there and just being aware of your time and where you're needed. But then yes, that evening time, that eight to midnight is like where you're working on the business, right? You're not working with clients. You're not working with any of that. You're, you know, you know that no one's going to interrupt your time there, um, aside from spouses, right? But 
that is the time where most entrepreneurs that I talk to are working on their business. Yep, exactly. Um, as much as I get to be with my kids through the day and go to their you know, basketball games and all their practices and, and volunteer in schools if I want. You know, the pandemic also taught us we have to teach them at home sometimes, you know, all of that. And we just have to go with the flow. That work gets pushed out. Now, um, again, that's the sacrifice we make to be able to be with our kids in the day, yet still running a business. So like you said, can we have it all? Yeah, but it comes with the sacrifice. Yep. Right. Everybody has to sacrifice somewhere. I think that a piece of advice that I give to a lot of my clients and, you know, everybody, honestly, is making yourself your number one client. A lot of people have clients and they work one to one with people or they have group programs or they're selling to people all the time. I always do my own work before I work on other people's work, if that makes sense. Like I used to do copywriting for a lot of people. I would make sure my own emails for the week were written before I wrote other people's emails. I would make sure that I had things set up for my own course before I talked to somebody else about setting up things for their course. And so making yourself your number one client is a very strict boundary that takes continuous work, but I always work on myself and my business before other people. And if I get too busy, then I lose a client or I drop a client or don't re-sign with a client so that I can continue to keep my business front of mind, forward facing. Right. And I think that that is a huge nugget also because it's really teaching you how to lead. Yeah. By example. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, especially with all the people out there right now that can bark like I do it this way or do it that way. But it's like, but are you doing it that way? Or like, are you just telling people to do that? Like it bothers me more than when I see a <laughs> Facebook ad for somebody buy my content plan or do this, like show up every day. And then I go to their actual Instagram and they don't do it. Like, Uh, why are you selling content plans and you don't utilize the content plan you're selling? Like, to me, that screams not authentic. um, That screams fake. That scream, oh, just no. Oh, okay. Phony, phony, phony. Okay. Well, let's ask you one more nugget here before you can go. And then you can tell us all the goods on where to find you because I could sit here and chat with you all day long. But um, one key takeaway. If someone's looking to build a personal brand and they are planning to hire and they are starting to launch something and um, what would you recommend to them, the number one thing to do for them to scale their personal brands? I think that you need to define the things that you find of value, the things that make you you and start showing up and talking about it. Because when you start creating content just to serve, you are going to beat out the person who's creating content to sell any day. So I have people come to me that say, hey, I want to start a blog, but I don't know what I'm going to monetize it as or what I'm going to sell. I say, great, start blogging. It'll come to you. Just start taking action now to then reap the benefits later. And I think that that's the underlining message. What happened with me is I was what my parents would say or my family would say an oversharer. But that oversharing made my business take off from what the viewer thinks is day one. The listener thinks, wow, Hillary just made one post and got 52 clients. But you know what I did prior to that? For five years, I showed up nearly every single day on Facebook and shared my journey of I listened to this podcast. We started a gym. We launched this. Here's my take on this constantly. Okay, All so of- don't be afraid to overshare. Yeah, it, do- it lives and dies in 15 seconds, man. Who cares? You care more than what anybody else cares about. It's our nobody egos. Cares. Nobody <laughs> cares. Literally nobody cares at all. You care more than anybody else. Nobody views and watches content more than you. Do you get what I mean? Like nobody analyzes yeah. your content more than yourself. They're on to the next. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Well, where can people find you and what 
what are you offering people these days? So, so where can you can find me on Instagram at Hillary Krieger. It's just one L. Um, you can find me at my website. It's Hillary Krieger.com. H I L A R Y K R U E G E R.com. Um, at the end of January, I don't know if this is airing, but the end of January, I have my messaging and marketing magic group program that's launching. I only have 50 spots for that. I do have a wait list. Um, for that. So people on the waitlist get first dibs in on that program. That's the program that I talked about that I have four co-coaches in. And that is like my signature offering all around how to become a personal brand, how to hone in on your marketing, your me- messaging, and how to take action to be forward facing in your business to get clients. Wow. Um, so that's like my signature program that's launching the end of January. That's essentially all that I have. I mean, I do work one-to-one with more established, um, businesses that are needing more specific marketing help and guidance. Um, so I have, I believe that's just like a backdoor application. Anybody can send me a message on Instagram if that's something you need, but yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, and I, We'll definitely put everything in the show notes. So if you guys have any questions or need help finding her, feel free to look in the show notes and definitely go and take a look at her stuff because she is one of the most authentic out there. And that's why I had to get her on here. So thank you so much, Hillary, for joining us today. And um, you shared some amazing, brilliant things on personal branding. And I hope someone could use that today in their business. So thank you so much and kudos to you for all you've done. Thank you so much, Tori. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks again for joining me on another episode of the Homefront Podcast, where happiness is our true profit. If you enjoyed today's chat, please take a minute to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. This helps us learn, grow, and reach more listeners just like you. Join me again next week as we drop new stories, experiences, and game-changing tips for your home front. As always, here empowering you in business and in life. Until next time.